What is the effect of head position on the caloric responses? The caloric testing is usually administered while the patient is supine with the head or upper body flexed forward 30 degrees with respect to the horizontal plane. This position is known as the standard caloric test position and is based on the work of Robert Barony in the early 1900s. It places the lateral semicircular canal or the horizontal semicircular canals in the plane of gravity and maximizes the intensity of caloric nystagmus. In the upright head position, lateral or horizontal semicircular canals reside at an angle of 30 degrees with respect to the horizontal plane. In the caloric test position, the lateral canals reside in the vertical plane and become aligned with gravity. Without caloric irrigation, no response is provoked because densities of cupula and endolymph are equal and the semicircular canals are not sensitive to gravity. Irrigation of the ear canal using a medium that's warmer or cooler than the body temperature changes endolymph density on the side of the canal closest to the irrigation site. Warm irrigations cause endolymph to become lighter and rise, resulting in an increase in neural firing from the irrigated ear. Cool irrigations cause endolymph to become heavier and fall, resulting in a decrease in the neural firing from the irrigated ear. According to the Berenice theory of caloric stimulation, responses depend on gravity and are maximized when the lateral semicircular canals are in the plane of gravity. No changes in the neural firing and the consequent caloric responses are expected in the absence of gravity or in the sitting position with the head tilted downwards 30 degrees because in this position the semicircular canals are perpendicular to the plane of gravity. Yet caloric responses have been reported in both conditions. So is Barony's hypothesis regarding caloric stimulation invalid? It turns out that the caloric responses are mediated by two independent components. One component is gravity dependent that follows Barony's hypothesis and accounts for approximately 90% of the response. The second component is gravity independent that's most likely caused by the direct effect of temperature on the vestibular nerve. This component accounts for only 10% of the response. For this component, warm temperatures cause an increase and cool temperatures cause a decrease in the vestibular nerve activities regardless of the head position. The evidence for two separate components of caloric stimulation comes from the observation that the direction of the nystagmus is reversed in the prone position with the head tilted 30 degrees downward. This can be explained by the gravity dependent component of the caloric response. Furthermore, Nystagmus intensity is stronger in the caloric test position compared to the prone position. This can be explained by the fact that the gravity independent and gravity dependent components are added in the supine position and subtracted in the prone position. There are two other head positions where the lateral semicircular canals are in the plane of gravity. The first head position is when the patient is sitting upright with the head tilted back 60 degrees. This position is not recommended for caloric testing because of the excessive neck extension. The other position is when the patient is in prone position with the head tilted down 30 degrees. Again, this position is not recommended for routine clinical testing because the caloric responses as noted before are not as strong as those in the standard caloric test position. So the standard caloric test position with the patient supine with the head flexed forward 30 degrees is the optimal position for caloric testing because it maximizes the caloric stimulation.